I don't even know what I really expected, but this Logan Paul and Dylan Dennis fight was a joke. Now, the main fight was a joke, and we should have known the main fight would have been a clown show because the pre-fight antics was nothing but clown show. Rather, it was Logan Paul bringing out Chris Hansen. You're a predator, and this uh, Saturday, October 14th, I'm going to catch you. And in fact, I brought an expert because we are going to catch you. I got my oh, boy, Chris Hansen. Chris Hansen. <laughs> because this Saturday, October 14th, <laughs> Me and Chris Hansen are going to catch a predator. Wow. Uh, that is Chris Hansen. Yeah. Or Dylan Dennis throwing a mic at Logan Paul that left a gas so deep that Logan Paul had a blood trail as he was escorted out the building. Watch it. But the clown show didn't stop there. Logan Paul came back the next day with a shiesty on to hide the gash wound that Dylan Dennis gave him. But Logan Paul didn't come alone. He came with the goons to send Dylan Dennis a message. I got all the goons in case he tries anything funny. In fact, I got Dylan Dennis kryptonite in the building. You know I brought the baddest dudes in the world. I got Gordon Ryan to protect me in case he tries any jujitsu bullshit. Now, I don't know if this should have been my warning or my sign that this fight was gonna be a clown show because I couldn't boggle my head around the thought that another man is bringing another man to a fight to protect him from another fighter. What's the point of engaging in a fight if you need another man to protect you? Like, I'm so confused here, bro. But the fight itself lived up to every bit of the clown show the pre-fight antics was, bro. First off, we thought these dudes had disdain and hostility for each other, that this was going to be a bloodbath. But the fight started off with Dylan Dennis not throwing a punch. He wouldn't throw a punch. He wouldn't engage in fights. Dennis in no hurry to engage. You know, I'm all about the talking and the trash talk, but you can't do this. You can't say you're going to rip somebody's head off and then not throw a punch. No, literally, there was a point in this fight where Dylan Dennis took a seat. Like, bro was like, hey, listen, I'm, <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> oh, he's doing the old Anderson Silva. That's what and it was at this point, I felt like, yo, I'm being pumped. Yo, I'm being, this is a big, sick joke that's being played on me at the expense of my $80. I'm being pumped. Because what type of boxing stance is this? Bro was throwing back punches, homie. Like, Dylan Dennis was trying to slap box Logan Paul. That's what I thought I was witnessing. A slap box match at this point. But no matter how awful the boxing match is, yo, the commentators were even worse. These dudes, for 30 straight minutes, were stuffing, riding, snorting, and munching on Logan Paul's glizzy for the entire fight. The other part about Logan Paul that we've come to know and love with his performances in the WWE is he loves a challenge. And I think if you ask him right now, he was like, I wish this was more of a battle. I wish this was more of a fight. Yo, take it out your mouth, homie. Take it out your mouth, homie. Bro, the throw glizzing didn't stop there, bro. Let's give Logan his props. He hasn't fought since that Floyd fight all those years ago. Pretty darn impressive how far he's come without having a single boxing match since then. No, oh, I think he's looked great. He's in phenomenal shape. And I think the athleticism has gone to another level. Not only was they throwing Logan Paul the whole fight, they was talking nothing but cash-ish about Dylan Dennis. Like, they had no good words to say about Dylan at all the whole fight. Not one good word. Guys, Dylan Dennis lives on the internet. I think he really just doesn't want to get knocked out. And ultimately, I think he thinks it's a moral victory if he goes the distance with Logan. They didn't even try to hide their bias behind a veil of objectivity. These dudes were actively setting up a narrative for Logan Paul after the fight. We know Logan Paul said he was going to knock out Dylan Dennis for his, you know, fiance, that Dylan was disrespected. But if Logan Paul don't knock him out, man, hey, listen, man, it's because Dylan Dennis was trying to, ah, uh, bro, just call the fight, bro. Like, stop this. There's no question. He doesn't understand what's going on right now. He thinks it's all for show. He's trying to have moments, right? He's trying to yeah. do what Nate did to Jake Paul. He's trying to do the DX thing. He's trying to have moments that he could then regurgitate online, but he is not winning any ounce of this fight. You know they even started calling for Logan Paul to break the fight rules and head kick Dylan. Wouldn't it be great if Logan threw a head kick right now? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Then some moments after, they literally tell Logan he should have hit Dylan while he was down. These dudes were rooting against Dylan and wanting chaos. What for me is fine if you don't like Dylan. I know Ariel and Dylan got a history, 
But, yo, that's not your job, bro. Like, your job is to just call this fight, not to try to push narratives in favor of a particular person. Here's going to be the narrative. You couldn't knock me out. Yeah. That's going to be the narrative. Because when you talk through the entire fight and do nothing, you lose all credibility. Let's not take Dylan off the hook either. This man was going out of his way to get disqualified, I guess, because he kept on trying to put Logan Paul in headlocks and guillotines, trying to do takedowns in a boxing match. Another round for Logan. Oh. Get and surprise, the fight ended exactly how we thought it would end after the first takedown attempt by Dylan. So Dylan gets disqualified, obviously, with like five seconds left on the clock. And then to top off the clown show, Logan Paul made sure we wouldn't end this fight without a little bit more of clownery. See, during his post-fight speech, Logan Paul probably did the corniest, clownest thing I'd have never seen in my life. A guy like that was not easy. He is a true demon, a true coward. And I want to give a thanks to the most important woman in my life, next to my mother, of course. My beautiful fiance. Me, wherever she is, baby, I love you so much from my heart and soul. I can't wait to start a family with you, live the rest of my life with you. And I got a message for anyone going- This man pushed his mom to the side and called Nina the most important girl in his life while his mom is right there, right? So he discarded his mom to bring her in to take his mom's space next to him. And she wasn't even by his side. Like, she left up out the ring, bro. Like, <laughs> listen, man. Uh, I don't know how I keep getting tricked into purchasing these fights, but I keep getting tricked, right? They- they get my money each and every time. I don't know how they do it, bruh, but they somehow get my money each and every time. Now, I'm going to go ahead and say this, though. All right. Uh, I was going to make a video on the Tommy Fury and KSI ending because I think KSI got robbed as well. But y'all let me know in the comment section, all right? Should I make a video about KSI getting robbed by the judges? Y'all let me know, all right? But if you're still watching, man, click on the video somewhere on my screen to find out, right, how hip hop's biggest groupie. Just got arrested and ruined his life for doing this to his girlfriend. Click on this video to find out what I'm talking about. I'm going to see you guys in this video, right? Um, out of here, folks. Peace.